Hey, it's Jeff Zito, and thanks for tuning in to the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. You can follow us at youtube.com slash the at sign Celebrity Jobber and on Instagram at Celebrity Jobber Podcast. All of our past episodes are on celebritygobber.com. It's a podcast where, you know, if it wasn't for a big break, that could be the difference between a famous celebrity and just a regular average Joe. The name Lisa Welchel might sound familiar. You might say, oh, how do I, who is that? Well, if I said Blair Warner, you'd know exactly who we're talking about. Lisa starred as Blair Warner on the hit 80s TV show, The Facts of Life. Kim Fields, Molly Ringwald, it was a huge show. And Lisa became a star. What's she been doing since The Facts of Life? I haven't heard a whole lot about her. She's had a lot of jobs, not only an actress. We'll find out what those jobs were and her very first job. And we'll see if there's another Facts of Life reunion in the works. Not to mention, what's Lisa doing these days? What's her new job? She's got one. Lisa Welchel, who is Blair Warner from The Facts of Life, is my guest this week on Celebrity Jobber. The Celebrity Jobber podcast with Jeff Zito. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, give a five-star rating, and leave a review. Check out all our past episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you pod. What if these celebrities weren't famous? What would they have become? What was their first job? We're about to find out. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. I Look, I know we're, we're living in a different world today. And I don't want to come off creepy, and I don't know if I should say this or not, but you look great. Oh, well, no, that's not creepy at all. I appreciate it. Well, you you know, again, you just, you don't know these days. It's a strange time, and you you, you want to pay a compliment and and be innocent about it, uh, but sometimes... You can't, so. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, this is this, isn't that sad that we can't just, you know, just talk and then expect that people will give us grace, um, you know, and, and understand our hearts are right. Right, exactly. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page. So I'm uh-huh. glad to okay. talk to you. I noticed this is a podcast about jobs, and you've had a, a lot of jobs and, and a new one. Uh, that I wanted to talk about coming up a little bit later. Uh, Me TV's collector's call is is your your latest endeavor. But can we back up? Can you tell me about all the jobs that you've had? I have actress, singer, songwriter, author, life coach. That's a lot. You left out the biggest one. Which is? Homeschooling mom. Well, oh, yes, uh, absolutely. That's a big one, absolutely. Yeah, so that was not just mom, but teacher. Yes, ma'am. That's a big one. I mean. Yeah, that took a, that took a lot of years and a lot of time. And, um, yeah, it was a, but yes, I, what a cool podcast. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a podcast about jobs. That is a great idea. So what we do pretty much is we talk to celebrities about all the jobs that we we know them for, and then maybe we talk about their first job and then what what they're doing now. So we got you know I got a lot wow. to I got a lot to ask you about because how long I you've been doing how long you've been doing this because that's a, such a fun idea. It's been about uh, two years and it's it's gone pretty well. Yeah, I guess so. That would be really fun to hear about. Uh, previous jobs of famous people. So do you, can you tell me what your first job was, Lisa? Well, since I started working pretty young, uh, I didn't have to, I had never had a job outside of show business. Wow. I started when I was uh, 12 on the new Mickey Mouse Club uh, as a mouseketeer for Walt Disney. So, um, and before that, at you know 10, I was doing commercials. So uh, if we're looking for jobs before that, I would guess it would be my chore list that uh, I sometimes got paid for, but oftentimes I would give it to my brother and pay him to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I find it so fascinating when you speak to an actor or an actress and their first job was actually in show business. I, I think that's really, really cool and it's very, uh, it's very unique. So 
Can you tell me about how you got onto the, the Facts of Life and, and how that experience was for you? Yeah, I had, after the Mickey Mouse Club, I stayed in, in Hollywood and did a couple of uh, movies and TV movies and had an agent. And so I, I was just, uh, I just auditioned for the Facts of Life. And um, I had auditioned for the Facts of Life, but I, at the same time, I auditioned for another show. They were, re, they were going to be replacing um, one of the characters on the television show called Hello, Larry!, uh, and I got both jobs at the same time, and I had to choose between either the Facts of Life, which was only a pilot, not a sure thing, or Hello, Larry, which definitely had at least one more season, and it was already on the air. And uh, I'm glad that I was naive, because I didn't know to take the sure thing. I just thought that the character of Blair seemed much more fun, so I chose uh, to go with the character of Blair. You made the right choice, I'd say. I guess I did, yes. Now, would you consider that, I mean, I I would consider it your big break, but uh, sometimes when I ask people, was there a certain set of circumstances that led to your, you know, your big break or, you know, you becoming a star, do you think becoming Blair Warner was the big break? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it was wonderful to be on the Mickey Mouse Club, and that enabled me to get from Texas to California but as far as, you know, just kind of breaking open my career, it's definitely facts of life. What about your parents, Lisa? Were, were they in showbiz? No, we, I was born and raised in Texas. My dad was an electrician, and uh, my mom was a uh, secretary. And no, none of us, there's no show business in my lineage before wow. me. So, so what led? And there's apparently not going to be any show businesses afterwards because none of my kids are in it. <laughs> well, what led to your, your desire to, to become, you know, an actress? Well, it, it was because I was actually very, very, very shy, and my second grade teacher during a parent-teacher conference told my mom that she was worried about me because I, I didn't really, I didn't have very good social skills and didn't really, um, and, and didn't talk much. And so she said, you know, maybe you can find some ways to help her come out of her shell. And so my mom signed me up for a little summer acting class at at the summer school program, and I took the acting class and and loved it because it allowed me to not be so scared as if I was playing a role, I could, um, you know, be a little bit, a little bit more freer with myself um, as long as I was kind of hiding behind a role and it felt good and I was good at it. And then what about singing, Lisa? When, when did you start singing and when did, you know, you start doing that as, as a profession? Well, I started singing back in when I started acting classes. Um, we did musicals, and so I my first job, big musical, was when I was ten years old. I played the part of Heidi in a musical theater in in Fort Worth called Casa Manana, and um, and so so I've been singing in musicals. I did Music Man, Sound of Music, and then Mickey Mouse Club, of course. But when I was on the Facts of Life, I really wanted a way to connect with uh, teenagers. I wanted to travel and use the platform from the Facts of Life to talk to them about how, how loved they are by God. And so I thought, well, if I can put some of those things I'd like to share to music, then it wouldn't be like I have to go around preaching. I can just go around singing, and maybe the message will you know will resonate with them. So you talked about all these jobs that, that you had, but you said the most rewarding was, you know, homeschool mom. So... Tell me a little bit about how difficult that was and what your decision was, you know, based on to do it at home instead of sending the the kids to a social environment like like school. Yeah, well, uh, the the main really I'll have to say the main reason is because uh, we were in Los Angeles at the time. And um, just the school, the the schools around us. you know, they were a little. I was a little scared to send my kids to school, and so I thought, well, I, I can teach them to read. I can teach them some basic math. So I thought, well, I'll give it. A, I'll keep them home for kindergarten, and it just went so well that we just kept doing it. And what are your kids doing nowadays? Uh, my, I have a daughter, Haven, who has her own podcast called um, uh, Haven the Podcast, and it's really, really. It's just, she just started it last year, and it's going like gangbusters. Very She's cool. Also a, entrepreneurial uh, woman who uh, her she's quite the powerhouse so she uh, builds businesses and sells them 
And then I have a son, Tucker, who is an associate producer at Apple Fitness. And so anybody watching the fitness program, he's the one putting that all together. Very and cool. And Clancy, who is um, in digital marketing and um, quite successful. But she's also, um, we actually did some acting together until she made the wise decision to leave show business. And in her words, she said, I don't think my nervous system can handle that business. <laughs> and I wholeheartedly agree. So now, the, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear the kids, you know, from your homeschooling are all successful and all doing, doing really well. Um, but your yeah, new job, your new job seems pretty cool. And I wanted to know, are you a hoarder? Because MeTV's Collector's Call has you going all over the place, finding people. Some of them are a little strange, to be honest with you. And they, uh, they're, <laughs> they're big time collectors of, you know, basically anything and everything. Uh, yeah, they are. Um, they're they're not hoarders though. There really is a purpose and a, a just they've got a they've got a passion for it and they've got a perp they've got a purpose for uh, just really getting up in the morning. And so I really admire the collectors and I love hearing the stories. And they really, um, you know, they're 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 preserving something from their childhood that feels good, which is great because it's a perfect fit for being on MeTV, which is memorable entertainment television, because it really does um, enable us to take a break from our day and kind of go back in time when things were, you know, a little simpler. Right, right. Do you collect anything, Lisa? No, I'm not a collector. Um, I, I, I will say that I've learned that uh, it's important to collect things that preserve things that matter to you. So from this point on, I, I, I will definitely collect something from every work project or every everything that uh you know that means something to me although probably won't be any one particular group so me tv's collector's call is uh sunday nights correct that's right sunday nights at six thirty, five thirty central and there you go and and uh anything new in acting coming up any any facts of life reunion maybe coming up uh, you know, there's always talk about it, but um, so far nothing's uh, nothing's on on film yet. Okay, well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. It was really great talking to you, Lisa. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's been a joy. Lisa Welshel had ordinary parents. Her father was an electrician. Her mother was a secretary. Nobody was in show business there, but Lisa had a problem with being shy. So I guess. She said her second grade teacher talked with her mother and said, hey, you got to get her, uh, you know, out of her shell here. So her mom thought it would be a good idea to sign her up for acting classes. And that's exactly what happened. Lisa's first job was in show business. I think she said she was 10 years old when she had her very first gig, which was a commercial. And shortly after that, the Mickey Mouse Club, you know all about her big break being the facts of life, Blair Warner. She was the debutante, snobby, stuck up rich girl on the show. And I laugh saying that because she was, you know, absolutely nothing like that in real life. I mean, very, very sweet. All the jobs that she's had, told you, actress, author, singer, life coach. She mentioned being a homeschool mom. She said that was her toughest job, but of course the most rewarding. I always thought, you know, homeschool kids had a tendency of being a little strange maybe because they weren't social, you know, in a social setting in school. They didn't know really how to, you know, interact with other kids, but it seems like all her kids are in good shape, they're all successful and, and got good jobs, so good for her. And uh, Facts of Life reunion, she says it's always being brought up, but uh, nothing on the books as of yet, but I think that would be pretty cool. I think they did one not too long ago, you know, like within the last 10 years or so. It was a huge show in the 80s. I watched every episode. Her new job, she's the host of Collector's Call on MeTV Sunday nights. She goes all over the country and finds people that collect weird stuff, and sometimes she's running into weird people. She was very, very sweet. What a nice person and a, a very, very interesting life. Imagine if Lisa took that Hello Larry gig. We might not know who she is. Because Blair Warner on the Facts of Life blew up so much. 
So thank you again for listening to Celebrity Jobber. All our past episodes are on CelebrityJobber.com. Follow us on YouTube.com slash the at sign Celebrity Jobber on Instagram at Celebrity Jobber Podcast. Of course, you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. We're on them all. And please don't forget to subscribe. Would love a five-star rating and leave a review. Got some great guests lined up here in the near future here on the Celebrity Jobber Podcast. Until next week, I'm Jeff Zito.